Right now, early voting in Wisconsin starts in just two days. Our Tanasia Shaw breaks down what you need to know before it starts. Also, both high-profile surrogates and presidential ticket nominees head to the Badger State over the next few days. And we're following the cast of the West Wing as they campaign for the Harris Walls ticket. We hear from the cast. That's coming up on News 3 Now at 5.30. Good evening and thank you for joining us tonight. I'm Jalen Banks. We start with three for the people coverage. This week, polls in Wisconsin will open for early voting. Our Tanasia Shaw is reporting on what you should know before heading to the polls this Tuesday. The November election is less than a month away. If you're heading out to vote early, it's important to know what you need to cast your ballot. I think early voting in person in the clerk's office is the best way to vote. This is Dane County's clerk, Scott McDonald. He says voting ahead of time is better because you never know what could happen. You could be sick, your kid could be sick, it could be pouring rain, who knows? Two, you know that the envelope was filled out correctly. You know, remember from previous elections where there's been issues with the address or signature. The clerk's the one witnessing it. When voting, it's important to know if you're registered or not. If you are registered in Wisconsin, all you will need is a form of identification, like a state ID or a passport. If not, you can register the day of with a form of identification and proof of residence, like a bank statement. Your ID is for the purpose of saying who you are. It can also be used to say, this is where I lived. You know, people move a lot in eight years your ID is there for. So these can be two different things. You can show a bank statement with your current address on it, and then your ID can just show who you are. From October 22nd until November 3rd, you can vote at any of the early voting locations in the city that you live in. Let's use Madison as an example. You can vote early at any of the libraries and locations they have. Um, they're all available to you. But you can't, let's say you live in the city of Verona, you can't try to vote early in Madison. So it has to be within the jurisdiction that you live. It's also important to know that polling hours vary. Madison has a lot of hours, a lot of locations. Um, you know, other places that have uh, more limited hours. So check the website of your community. Check the, before you head over there. We have a list of polling locations and hours right now on our website. Reporting in Madison, Tanaja Shaw, News 3 Now. Tanasia, thank you. Now let's get a look at our certified most accurate forecast with meteorologist Blaze Keller, who's out on the weather patio. Blaze, a little bit warmer than usual. I mean, we're at least 20 degrees above average here at 78 degrees, possibly reaching a high temperature of 79 degrees. This will be uh, at least Madison's second warmest temperature ever recorded uh, for today's date, having hit 79 degrees. If we even briefly slid into 80 degrees, we're still seeing, uh, at least for now, uh, our second hottest temperature recorded for today's day. And we may do it all over again tomorrow. It's 80 in Nesita, 83 in Boaz, 83 in Fenimore, 78 in Schulzburg, as well as in Yuba, 76 in Sullivan with plenty of sunshine. And uh, the southwesterly winds and the sunshine are the reason why we have been so hot, at least today and will be tomorrow. There is some rain in the forecast that's going to bring about not only some much needed rain, but some cooler temperatures as well starting Tuesday into Wednesday. But I think the best chance actually and what I think this graphic is picking up on is the rainfall that we might see as we go into the next weekend. That would be Saturday, possibly into Sunday as well. So uh, we're looking at maybe a quarter of an inch to a half an inch at best. But again, I think a lot of that holds off until our upcoming weekend. We're going to cool off into the 50s and possibly even the 60s tonight. We're tracking out that heat and how long it sticks around for in your full forecast. All right, Blaze, we'll see you then. Fitchburg police arrest a 21 year old Madison resident this morning after they allegedly drove recklessly on Fish Hatchery Road and Greenway Cross. Officers say the driver ran multiple red lights and drove into oncoming traffic. The vehicle allegedly fled into Madison, refusing to stop for Fitchburg police. The driver was arrested and processed at the Dane County Jail on a probation violation. The Fitchburg Police Department will refer multiple charges to the Dane County District's Attorney's Office, including second degree recklessly endangering safety and fleeing or eluding an officer. Vice Presidential nominee J.D. Vance speaking in Waukesha this evening. Vance, the running mate of former President Trump, is at Stein's Aero right now, an aircraft services company. Vance speaking on issues impacting Catholic voters. Tonight at 10, we'll hear more from the vice presidential nominee on what he had to say to Wisconsinites. 
And staying on the campaign trail, Monday, Vice President Harris and former Congresswoman Liz Cheney will be back in the Badger State on Monday. The Vice President and the former Congresswoman are going across multiple swing states on Monday with a series of moderated conversations focused on the VP's agenda and how it differs from her opponent, former President Donald Trump. Meanwhile, former President Barack Obama is campaigning in Madison on Tuesday. It's a joint visit with Democratic Vice Presidential nominee Tim Walz. The pair will be in town on Tuesday, the same day as early voting. A time and location for the rally have not been released yet. The visit comes amid a flurry of stops by Democratic surrogates, including Massachusetts Senator Elizabeth Warren, who was in Eau Claire today and will be in La Crosse on Monday. Now we're in the final stretch of election season, and this weekend a popular political TV show has reunited. Actors from West Wing are in Madison to campaign for Kamala Harris and Tim Walz. And our Meryl Hubbard got an exclusive interview with one of the stars. West Wing wrapped up its final season in 2006. But here in 2024, some of the cast members have rejoined to motivate support for the Harris campaign. Madison! Four cast members are in Madison to rally Democrats and undecided voters ahead of the election. Bradley Whitford, Mary McCormick, Richard Schiff, and Martin Sheen all started with a meetup on Madison's east side with a couple dozen canvassers. For Whitford, this is a return home. He is a Madison local that grew up on the east side and is passionate about getting more Wisconsin voters out to the polls this election. He spoke about how his dad used to work for Planned Parenthood in Madison. You know, he was a man who felt that uh, women deserved agency over their own bodies, and that's what I grew up with. That's what I think the majority of people in Wisconsin are, are, uh, are, are looking for. In turn, Whitford is advocating for women's reproductive freedom, gun safety, and an opportunity economy. We know what the stakes are in this election. This ain't, you know... This ain't no stick in television show. The West Wing cast concluded their Madison campaign tour with a meeting at the Barrymore Theater, where local supporters took their seats to hear from the celebrity speakers. After hearing from the cast, they all wrapped up by singing America the Beautiful in unison. <laughs> Reporting on Madison's East Side, Meryl Hubbard, News 3 Now. Merrill, thank you. Now we have a response from WISH GOP Chairman Brian Schimming, and he says, perhaps the cast can finally share their secret plan to fight inflation since Kamala Harris does not have one. All right, coming up next on News 3 Now at 5.30, a tentative deal has been reached in the Boeing strike. But how do the workers feel? We'll find out. And tonight at 10, Consumer Report shows us how you can keep your home safe with some of the best smoke detectors this fire prevention month. These Baldwin ads are nasty. I can't stand them. She never tells the truth. Now she says Eric Hovde wants to raise the retirement age. That's malarkey. I saw in the news Social Security will be going bankrupt in eight years. Are you kidding? We need Social Security. You're surprised? Washington spends money like crazy. And Baldwin supports all of it. I'm Eric Hovde, and I approve this message. You better get a job. You get a job. A lot of law firms claim to be experts at handling injury cases that involve large trucks. But handling one trucking case does not make you an expert on the subject. Experience matters in these cases. One local firm has handled 25 trucking cases which resulted in payments over $1 million each, and hundreds of others as well. Because Wisconsinites know who to call when it's a must-win scenario. They call Habish, Habish & Rotier. National reputation, hometown service. Under Kamala, there's been a big hike in Medicare premiums. Social Security benefits don't go far with Kamala's inflation slamming seniors. Now Kamala wants struggling seniors to pay more Social Security taxes, while she gives Medicare and Social Security to illegals. That will do Medicare. President Trump will make sure no one cuts Medicare or Social Security. Trump lowered Medicare premiums, and he'll end the tax on Social Security. I'm Donald J. Trump, and I approve this message. Eric Hovde has a problem, a problem with the truth. Time and again, his ads have been called false. 
He's a desperate candidate willing to say anything. But here's what's true. Eric Hovde has a plan to slash Social Security 28%, Medicare 25%, veterans' benefits 40%, all to spend $4 trillion on tax breaks for rich guys like himself. Eric Hovde's lying, and he's not for us. I'm Tammy Baldwin, and I approve this message. You're watching News 3 Now at 5.30, moving forward. Thank you for staying with us. A tentative deal has been reached to end the weeks-long strike at Boeing. Samantha Lomabau has more. The picket line still holding strong for Boeing workers outside the Everett factory. I'm disappointed that the company is not recognizing our value. I want our company to solidify this thing and let us come back to work. After five full weeks on strike, employees both old and new got a revised contract offer from the company on Saturday. Boeing's new proposal has some major changes, including a 35% wage increase spread over four years, a reinstated incentive plan, increased 401k contributions, and a one-time $7,000 ratification bonus. It's not good enough, and it's not a step in the right direction because this could be resolved fairly simply. Joanne Smith is a 10-year veteran with Boeing and says more needs to be done, like bringing back the pension plan that was taken away years ago. We are building a very, very important product. <laughs> People's lives are at stake when they go 35,000 feet in the air. Improve the culture. And that means not only the safety and the quality, but the people that provide that safety and quality. But for Tony Lindman, who started his job at Boeing eight months ago, he's on strike to get back to work. I, I see the reality of the pension not coming back. It's not economically viable. You know, um, 401k and a $5,000 bump, sweet, that's great. I can really dig that. Lindman says he's not just out there for himself, but for his colleagues who depend on their job to provide for their families. He's got two kids and a mortgage. I'd like to see his future solidified. But I mean, I think they'll take care of it. I mean, we got to show Boeing our worth too. And what kind of worth are we showing them out here? Coming up next on News 3 Now at 5.30, the latest on a bridge collapse that took the lives of several people. And meteorologist Blaze Color returns with a complete look at your first one forecast. Under Kamala, there's been a big hike in Medicare premiums. Social Security benefits don't go far with Kamala's inflation slamming seniors. Now Kamala wants struggling seniors to pay more Social Security taxes while she gives Medicare and Social Security to illegals. That will do Medicare. President Trump will make sure no one cuts Medicare or Social Security. Trump lowered Medicare premiums and he'll end the tax on Social Security. I'm Donald J. Trump and I approve this message. You have a clear choice in this election. Senator Baldwin is a 38-year career politician. I'm a businessman and job creator. She supports taxpayer benefits for illegal immigrants. I'll close the border. Tammy wants to put guys and girls sports and in their bathrooms. I'll protect our daughters. Senator Baldwin abuses the political system. I'll fight the corruption. I'm Eric Covdy and I prove this message. I'd be honored to have your vote. My late father-in-law lit up a room, but his vision dimmed with age. He had AMD. I didn't know it then, but it can progress to GA, an advanced form of the disease. His struggle with vision loss from AMD made me want to help you see warning signs of GA, like hazy or blurred vision, so it's hard to see fine details. Colors that appear dull or washed out, or trouble with low light. That makes driving at night a real challenge. If you think you have GA, don't wait. Treatments are available. Ask a retina specialist about FDA-approved treatments for GA and go to gawon'twait.com. When I was five, I began getting sexually abused by my stepfather, and he got me pregnant when I was 12.
64,000 pregnancies from rape have occurred in states with total abortion bans. And Trump did this. Women and girls need to have choices. With Kamala Harris, we do. I'm Kamala Harris, and I approve this message. News 3 Now First Warm Weather is brought to you by Lazy Boy Home Furnishings and Decor. Discover a shopping and design experience as comfortable as the furniture. Lazy Boy Home Furnishings and Decor. Schedule your free design consultation today. You're watching News 3 Now at 5.30, moving forward. At least seven people have died after a Sapelo Island ferry dock collapsed Saturday afternoon. That's according to the Georgia Department of Natural Resources. CBS News correspondent Christian Benavides has the latest on this tragic incident. A joyous celebration turning tragic here in Georgia. And now there's an ongoing investigation into how a gangway that connected a loading dock to Sapelo Island collapsed. We're here in Darien, Georgia. This is the mainland, and here's where you typically would catch a ferry to be able to get into Sapelo. We got an opportunity to get a close-up look at what's left of the gangway. Officials say upwards of 40 people were on it at the time, as hundreds were on the island for a celebration of Gullah Geechee culture. They are descendants of enslaved people from West Africa who, because they lived in remote places such as Sapelo Island, have been able to retain their culture through the years. There are just a few dozen people who are full-time residents in the island, and the community is shattered. At a press conference, officials said that all of those who died were visiting the island for the cultural festival. In statements, both President Joe Biden and Georgia Governor Brian Kemp expressed their condolences. The investigation is ongoing. Christian Benavides, CBS News, Darien, Georgia. Switching gears now, let's get a look at your first one forecast with meteorologist Blaze Keller. Blaze, what should we expect? Well, it was a hot day today. In fact, the Madison area, whether we topped out at 79 degrees or briefly slid to 80 degrees, recorded our second warmest October 20th in recorded history. The hottest temperature recorded for today's date was 82 degrees. And we may do it at, uh, all again tomorrow. Our forecast high of 79 degrees would be the third hottest temperature recorded for October 21st. There were two years that we hit 81 degrees, and then back in 1947, we recorded the hottest October 21st in Madison recorded history, which was 84 degrees. It's a combination of sunshine and southwesterly winds that are going to continue to keep us warm, not only into your day tomorrow, but over the next possibly two weeks. We're expecting these warmer than average temperature trends to continue for both daytime highs and overnight lows. The heat continues to sit over us with about a 70 to 80 percent confidence level from October 26th through October 30th. So towards the end of our extended forecast, we'll take a look at our expected highs through that time frame here in just a moment. But watch as that bullseye sits over Michigan, parts of Indiana, Illinois, as well as southern Wisconsin as we go from October 28th through November 3rd. That's a near 100 percent confidence that we will see sit underneath these warmer than average temperatures uh, through the first few days of November. Whether that's a degree or several degrees is still to be determined, but the confidence is there. And take a look at just our, our forecast high temperatures compared to normal. Our high temperature should only be at 58 degrees, but we're going to be about 20 degrees warmer than that for your Monday about 15 to 20 degrees warmer than that for your Tuesday. Seasonal as we go Wednesday into Thursday because of a cold front passing through on Wednesday. But then by the end of our upcoming weekend into the start of that following week, we're back to anywhere between 10 to 20 to almost 25 degrees above average. And again, that means that our overnight lows will most likely be warmer than average too, because if we're going to climb to 80 degrees, we can't cool into the 30s because we only climb about 30 degrees from our overnight lows to our daytime highs. So we have to start off warm to only get that much warmer during the day. High pressure systems continuing to sit off to our south and east are the reason why we're going to sit underneath these warmer than average temperatures for the next two weeks. They're pushing that warmer air out of the plains back into the Great Lakes as we sit underneath the ridge of the jet stream. When that jet stream bubbles up, that allows the warmer temperatures to climb that much further north. So typically we would see that polar jet further south and really keep a lot of that heat well off to our south. So again, our high temperatures compared to normal expected to be 
20 to 25 5-ish degrees above average as we kick off our next work week. Plenty of sunshine, a brief southwesterly breeze at times, but we're looking at the upper 70s to low 80s. And again, for the Madison area, we just have to hit 76 degrees to make it within the top five warmest temperatures recorded for October 21st. With 200 days spent above average for this year, we are at 68% of the year being above average with only one average day in the Madison area. There is a look at our 10 day forecast. We do see a chance for rain Tuesday, but folks at home, I think our best chance for rain will actually be that Sunday with that 50% chance. It just looks like uh, there's just better conditions as we look to end next weekend. 68% of us being above average for mm -hmm. the year. It would be very low hanging fruit for me to make some type of joke based off of your name, so I'm not going to do it. <laughs> All right. But for those of you at home, I'm sure you can <laughs> figure out where I'm going with this one. Yes, yes. But uh, yeah, it's uh, it'll be interesting to see how the the these last two months will kind of plan out and how mm -hmm. that uh, how that will determine where this year ultimately ends. All right. Well, sounds good. I know you and our team are going to be on top of it. Thank mm -hmm. you, Blaze. And still ahead on News Three now, Andrew's in studio with the highlights from a high stakes game at Lambeau. Next in sports. Sarah Kieski, she supports lifting revenue limits, allowing property tax rates to skyrocket unchecked. Kieski's backers want to ban natural gas to heat our homes, driving utility bills through the roof. That's Kieski's record, expensive and extreme. I'm Kamala Harris, and I approve this message. Donald Trump makes a lot of promises, but we can be sure of one thing. If he wins, he'll ignore all checks that rein in a president's power. It's all in Trump's Project 2025 agenda. What does that mean for you? Higher cost on groceries, cuts to Social Security and Medicare, more tax breaks for billionaires, and a national abortion ban putting women's health at risk. A second Trump term, more unhinged, unstable, and unchecked. Have you heard Eric Humpty? I am totally opposed to abortion. I am totally opposed to politicians telling women what we can do. Extremists all over the country have passed abortion bans. Criminal penalties for doctors. No exceptions for rape or incest. Women are dying just trying to get health care. There are even restrictions in Wisconsin. This has to stop. I am totally opposed to abortion. We are, are totally, totally opposed, opposed to Eric Humpty. I'm Tammy Baldwin and I approve this message. Under Kamala, there's been a big hike in Medicare premiums. Social Security benefits don't go far with Kamala's inflation slamming seniors. Now Kamala wants struggling seniors to pay more Social Security taxes while she gives Medicare and Social Security to illegals. That will do Medicare. President Trump will make sure no one cuts Medicare or Social Security. Trump lowered Medicare premiums and he'll end the tax on Social Security. I'm Donald J. Trump and I approve this message. Sarah Kieski, she supports lifting revenue limits, allowing property tax rates to skyrocket unchecked. Kieski's backers want to ban natural gas to heat our homes, driving utility bills through the roof. That's Kieski's record, expensive and extreme. The first warm weather team takes you beyond the barometer, only on News 3 Now. This week's showdown at Lambeau between the Packers and the Texans was a big one, and it lived up to the hype. It was between a pair of quarterbacks that took their teams to the playoffs in their first year as starters and could be the future faces of this league. C.J. Stroud's 5-1 Houston squad against Jordan Love and the Packers, who were up early. The Texans were, that was, in the second quarter, and like Cupid on Valentine's Day, Love slings an arrow right into the heart of Tucker Craft, and he's happy about it. Packers take the lead, but then the heat turned up. Midway through the third, Houston up 19-14, Love looking and unloads it for Josh Jacobs' touchdown Green Bay, but Again, it wasn't going to be that easy because after a Houston field goal, the Packers needed to go and go fast. Love lasers one to Romeo Dobbs, who had a big day, and it sets up this. Brandon McManus, the kicker, who was just signed this week, well, he earns his keep. And his Lambeau leap to Green Bay comes back and wins it. 24 to 22, the final score. They got out a grueling win, but a win nonetheless. And according to Love and the Floor, this was the test that this team needed. 
Yeah, it's huge. Um, you know, I think that's one of the biggest areas that uh, we tried to improve on from last year. I think we, we came up short too many times last year in these two-minute drill situations to go win the game. And, uh, you know, it's, it's definitely good to be able to go out there and put a drive together, get in the field goal range, and, and uh, come up victorious right there. Uh, certainly a lot of things to clean up in every phase. But ultimately, at the end of it, I'm just really proud of our guys' effort and their, their ability to, to stick together um, and just find a way to battle it out. And we will be right back. Under Kamala, there's been a big hike in Medicare premiums. Social Security benefits don't go far with Kamala's inflation slamming seniors. Now Kamala wants struggling seniors to pay more Social Security taxes while she gives Medicare and Social Security to illegals. That will doom Medicare. President Trump will make sure no one cuts Medicare or Social Security. Trump lowered Medicare premiums and he'll end the tax on Social Security. I'm Donald J. Trump and I approve this message. You have a clear choice in this election. Senator Baldwin is a 38-year career politician. I'm a businessman and job creator. She supports taxpayer benefits for illegal immigrants. I'll close the border. Tammy wants to put guys and girls sports and in their bathrooms. I'll protect our daughters. Senator Baldwin abuses the political system. I'll fight the corruption. I'm Eric Covey and I prove this message. I'd be honored to have your vote. Excitement comes standard with the Honda Accord. And so does a turbocharged engine. Sophisticated. High tech. Style that enhances functionality. Stand out with the Honda Accord. From Honda, the most awarded brand in car and driver 10 best history. Contact your Honda dealer today or shop online. I'm Kamala Harris, and I approve this message. Donald Trump makes a lot of promises, but we can be sure of one thing. If he wins, he'll ignore all checks that rein in a president's power. It's all in Trump's Project 2025 agenda. What does that mean for you? Higher cost on groceries, cuts to Social Security and Medicare, more tax breaks for billionaires, and a national abortion ban putting women's health at risk. A second Trump term, more unhinged, unstable, and unchecked. All right, Andrew, a big day for the Packers, but the NFC North continuing to be the toughest division in all of football. Yeah, and it, exactly the reason why this one was just that important. Even when you're not playing against the NFC North, the Packers land up against this Houston squad, who's a really good team. Mm -hmm. In fact, the only other team that's beaten them this year is the Vikings. Yeah. So they're a really, really good team and a really big win for the Packers, a good way to test themselves and they really measured up to this measuring stick. Yeah, as far as the NFC North goes, you're going to have to win all of your out-of-division games because the race is going to be super tight, it looks like, as we get towards the end of the season. Absolutely. All right, well, sounds good. Thank you, Andrew. It was a beautiful day yeah. up in Lambeau. Is that going <laughs> to continue to be the case? I mean, across all of Wisconsin, sunny 70s and 80s today. Tomorrow, very much the same, maybe just slightly cooler. Uh, you're taking a look at the bus stop forecast. You don't need the light jacket as you're heading off to work and sending the kids off to school because we'll be in the 50s, if not the 60s, where we would normally end the day. 70s through Tuesday, 60 on Wednesday after maybe some showers, but I think the best chance for showers arise by the end of the upcoming weekend. We've got a, a 50 percent chance for scattered showers. A little bit warmer than usual, but we're not going to complain before yeah, we head into the latter half of the fall. All yeah. right. Well, sounds good. Thank you, guys, and thank you all for joining us.